glanced over uh, expect expectation value, how to calculate expectation expectation value in the last class. But let's make it a little more concrete in this one. So, uh, as we understood that uh, the expectation value is the expected outcome um, which we get, which we will get if we perform um, m many same experiments for a certain state. So let me let me um, give you an example because my wording is not very nice. Let's say we have our proton sitting in the center and there's an electron going around. We already have considered this example. And let's say we have not just one energy sh orbit but we have many orbits. Something like that. So, um, and each of these orbits, let's say, has some energy E0, E1, E2, and so on. Now, it, you may have a state psi, and let's call the first state as psi 0. Second state as psi one, and the third state by state we mean these are constant energy states, and psi two. This is just an example. Let's, let's not worry too much about the details. Um, so and let's say if you have a wave function or a state vector. This is a state of constant energy, and we have some generic state vector, which is let's say a psi zero plus b psi one plus c psi two. Then, if you measure energy of, uh, so this is the state. If you measure energy of, um, if you measure energy of the system you can actually, so this is probabilistic, so you can expect that either you can get this value, this value, or this value. So either get E0, E1, or E2. As a matter of fact, you can see that the expected value is A square E0 plus B square E1 plus C square um, E2. This is the expected value. Uh, the reason over a square is because you know that um, this is just a wave function. You actually have, have to take uh, something like this. You have to calculate something like this to find your expected uh, dx sum. This is just symbolical. Don't worry about the mathematics right now because it's not accurate. The point is simple. Um, so find energy you have to op operate it with the Hamiltonian again if that statement is not very clear that's all right for now but this is an expectation value or if you take if you take an even more simpler example if you have a rod of length a and you make and you pick up random points the average or the expectation value will be a over 2 that's another example uh, things become more concrete when we talk in terms of any particular examples. So here is a little hand waving. Uh, but anyway, that's the idea. And um, um, uh, the expectation value of any operator acting on a state vector is given as psi a psi star a psi dx0 dx1 and whatever are the variables on which size depending okay now the this is sort of a continuous system if you have let's say a discrete system with um, finite number of vectors then the expectation value you know it can be written as in that particular case a is not really a sort of uh, um, it's not really a continuous operator, but A can be actually written as a matrix, and we'll talk about that. 
and in this particular case when you have so this is psi this is psi star this is a so this is expectation value of a for a system with finite number of eigen functions okay uh, and this actually can be understood in another way we know we can write this whole thing as now if a let's say is Hermitian operator then we know that for some phi some eigenfunction we will get a phi where a is a uh, eigenvalue which is real and a is the, op the operator and phi is the eigenfunction so operator and eigen function okay and if you look closely here we can write expand um, a uh, I mean psi as the basis function of these eigen functions phi's which we can do that by simply including a unity operator so you sum over i equals 1 to infinity phi a psi something like this now we know this is going to be a because a when acted on phi gives a phi similarly if a is acting like a can act here or a can act like that also and still it will give a it will still it will give this thing because a is um, real so a star it should have given a star but a star is nothing but a because a is a real number and if you do that we actually get um, here we get just because sums from 1 to infinity this actually will give us something like a integral sum over i equals 1 to infinity phi square dx0 dx1 and whatever so on now as you can see this is the probability of phi is the inner product this is the inner product which means it's sort of uh, a projection we are doing making a projection of psi on phi that's what inner product actually means uh, whenever we have we take inner product of two vectors in Euclidean space we know that this is what we get the projection so this the um, well the, prob the probability of psi being in phi is this so this p square, the probability square, multiplied by, well, actually, you see, if you have to label it n because there are many, many phi's, so all of these are actually n, so there will be a n here also, and n here, and this whole thing is p n a n sum. If you pay attention. So P n is the probability of finding phi uh, psi in phi n, and uh, we know that eigenvalue or uh, if, uh, eigenvalue of phi n is a n. So the probability of finding a n is P n, and when you sum up over all the values, we know that we get the expected value of a a. So a is nothing but a weight. So this is sort of a weight, weight over all the possible a n's of uh, um, the psi. So psi can have this, like here, it can be E0, E1, E2, these are like ANs, different ANs. Uh, moreover, um, one more thing, yes, the thing that is 
stay the same if you want to calculate the expectation value of let's say different operator different Hermitian operator then everything says stays the same it's again the same thing is psi star b psi dx0 dx1 and so on now b is a new operator and may have um, different eigenstates and it may be possible to write phi now as a linear combination of um, let's call v uh, I don't know what symbol to use um, let's say which phi we have used phi we have used psi let's call, v, let's call it theta not very good but let's call it theta theta is theta n equals b n theta n okay and the same thing can be done here again you get the same thing you get b n integral over theta n psi square dx 0 dx 1 and so on now uh, this is the expectation value of the operator b this particular operator now it may happen the psi, the psi can actually have um, can be composed of different parts let's say there is some expectation of energy there can also be expectation value of finding x or the moment of p things like that so um, or other variables angular momentum things like that but here um, we can see that um, we can at least for each of these individual operators what we can do we can the expectation value can be described in terms of the, the eigenstate of these Hermitian operators and that's how we find expectation value we'll solve some examples and it will become even more clear but for now there is one more thing we can discuss which is the uncertainty in measurement so expectation value is nothing but the mean and our standard is nothing like standard deviation expectation value can also be written as something like this this is another way of writing and uh, the error in and we know standard deviation as we know that if you have a normal distribution this is the standard deviation and the mean is here similarly here the standard deviation can be defined as b minus expectation value b um, square take a square root this is delta b or the uncertainty in delta b b same as this sum here is can call this mean or mu equals sum over all x i's where x let's say is a point belonging to this distribution over number of points standard deviation we know is x i minus mu squared um, over n take a square root that is standard deviation so similarly here the same idea is here the standard the expectation value is nothing but sort of uh, the mean of the observation and the delta b is how spread out the observation will be we will take some examples and it will be more clear 